Good morning everyone, welcome back to the Travelling Ulcers. I'm Tim and today I'm going to be walking you through our garden. But before I begin, I'd like to thank everyone for watching and liking our Sense8 reaction video. Probably hands down our most positive reaction ever. Um, for us, two and a half thousand views is massive. Um, we generally only average about a hundred views, seeing as we only have 60 subscribers. So thank you so much. So one thing we've also noticed, 82.2% of you watching our videos are not subscribers. So please hit the subscribe and bell notification buttons below. We've been asked by a lot of people on Instagram and Facebook to walk through our garden. So that's what I'll be doing today. It is the Queen's birthday weekend, so it is a long weekend. Um, and my apologies, the whole place is an absolute mess. Seriously, there's crap everywhere. Only because we've been so busy with work and with you know YouTube that we just haven't had time to really dedicate to the garden maintenance and especially the aquaponics is in a dire state and that's the purpose of this weekend. We're going to be dedicating our time to making sure that the garden's fertilized, that we do our regular monthly maintenance on the aquaponics setup. So before we get to that point, I'm just going to walk you through our garden. So we're going to end with the aquaponics and I'm just going to show you the general lay of the land. Okay, so firstly, we're going to start at the very end. Okay, so I think everyone knows what a navel orange tree looks like, but for us, this is not just a bay tree. That's a bay forest. Okay, moving across there, that is our, oh, I'd say about six year old pine nut tree. Okay, I'm actually quite surprised that this is going as well as it is, but this is the long, um, we also have a long arm tree. It is unfortunately very undernourished. Strangely enough, the chilies, especially the habaneros and the cayenne peppers are um, surviving winter so far. It's pretty cold and I'm actually really surprised that that they're surviving quite well. That is hands down the the pride and joy of our garden. That's the um, Tahitian lime tree. We bought it about six years ago and it is flourishing. Seriously, it is impressive. Afterwards, when we walk through the kitchen to get to the front of the house, um, I'll show you just a small sample of the limes that we've collected. Um, off that one tree. Now, this is very much a surprise. Um, we have a star fruit tree that's growing really, really well. I, I really had no expectations on it to survive here in Melbourne, considering how cold it is, but it's surviving really well. And right next to it as well is a relatively advanced um, papaya plant. Once again, um, this is Melbourne's winter and the frost generally tends to kill these plants. So I'm really surprised that they survived. This plant here, we originally bought a, um, the normal black passion fruit. But um, from what I understand, um, all passion fruit sold in Australia uses a very base um, stock. Um, I think it's the original version of the passion fruit and then they graft on whatever variety you want. Um, Unfortunately, the passion fruit that we bought, the, the grafted component died and the main rootstock survived. And that's what's actually fruiting here. I absolutely despise this. I love the actual black passion fruit, but this is like an orange kind of blue passion fruit, which I don't like at all, um, the, the inside. And I'll show you later. We'll open one afterwards and you'll see it's dry and it's pink and red on the inside. I don't like it, but Mark loves it. So that's why we've, we've left it here. What we have here is um, our bananas. These are ladies' fingers bananas, very thin skin. The flesh is incredibly sweet. Um, we generally get only one crop per season, but for some reason this year, we actually got two bunches of um, really, really amazing ladies' fingers. Okay, this plant here is called a babaco or champagne fruit. We love this. So when it's ripe, 
that green or papaya looking fruit actually turns dark orange and when you eat into it the reason it's got champagne fruit is because it fizzes um, almost like champagne or prosecco it is fascinating it, it is a very interesting fruit however when it's green like this you can actually add it into curries and chutneys um, and to all my Asian followers you can actually use it almost like winter melon so you can add it into soups and into casseroles this here is Monstera Delicioso or Deliso um, it's really what you call the um, fruit salad plant as you can see here we've got quite a few fruits I absolutely love this chili plant this is the Rokoto or the chili tree it is actually a perennial here in Australia so it, it pretty much it never dies and it's a very heavy producer very heavy cropper um, and the fruits are very very spicy very hot even by my standards so as you can see here um, we've got more chilies and um, what I like to call volunteer strawberries these are the um, white strawberries and they are absolutely delicious I prefer the white strawberries over the red ones anytime we've still got some beetroot which we need to harvest but in this area what I want to focus on is this tree here this is the macadamia nut tree um, to Pearlie who only asked about this the other day this is specifically the A4 macadamia nut it's actually a really heavy cropper um, and is suitable for New South Wales and Victoria because it handles the cold much better um, it doesn't handle wind very well and you need to fertilize it um, heavier than other macadamia nut trees because it actually um, crops early in the season so that was the main garden so now let's get to the aquaponics setup which is right behind me aquaponics gardening is whereby you raise fish and the bio waste and fecal matter produced by the fish is fed through a series of garden beds or grow beds whereby bacteria breaks down the waste into ammonia into nitrite and then into nitrate which is then absorbed by the plants so this is filled with clay walls and in here we have galangal Vietnamese mint which unfortunately isn't doing too well because I did salt this IBC recently which unfortunately has killed off the Vietnamese mint but the samphire is doing really well um, and I'm quite surprised that I still have any chilies in here but I don't know if you can see but we've got little seedlings kind of germinating here so I've thrown in here kale two types of lettuce um, so I've thrown in here kale, two types of lettuce, one bok, bok choy. Um, so they're starting to germinate, which is great. Um, so I don't know if you can see, I'm going to lift one up. Um, the plant set roots and just consume the nutrients. So once again, bacteria does exist within the clay walls. And if we look over here, this, is, this series of pipes is still fed by IBC1. Um, we, what we have here is a combination of two types of kale, three types of lettuces, one bok, bok choy, um, as well as chilies. And they're all, these are relatively new seedlings. So we, German, we buy seeds in bulk. I think the last time we bought 15,000 seeds from a seed wholesaler from a seed bank. And we just germinate the seeds as we need them. Um, we germinate the seedlings as we need them. So this is IBC2. So let me show you what I'm talking about so as you can see in here there's um, a filter which sucks up the water and the waste at the bottom as you can see there is some residue which I need to to clean up um, the little fish that you see swimming around um, they're silver perch they're very very young so we need to um, have them cleaned up I, I need to clean this up very soon you might also notice that the water is a bit golden, it's a bit yellowish. The reason, it, the reason it's yellowish is because we need to add in iron ferrograde because that's the one thing unfortunately this system does not produce. In grow bed 2 we have goto cola, unfortunately a very sad looking samphire and we did until recently have lots of tomatoes but we only cleaned them, um, we only removed them this week. <clears throat> Grow bed number two, we have taro, 
Ghost of Cola, Samphire, Water Chestnuts. And it looks like we have a small growth of duckweed. Here we have another deep water culture, DW, deep water culture set up where we have um, bok choy, lettuce, kale. Um, I think that's last season's amaranth going to seed and some white strawberries. And as you can see, we have more PVC piping with lots of other vegetables as well. Now the taro grows exceptionally well in an aquaponic setup, as you can see here. So anyone who wants taro leaves, give me a yell. So that's my garden tour done. I will tell you this, my arms are killing me. The gimbal and this camera weighs a ton. So that's my garden everyone. This is what I spend most of my free time doing out here, whether it's pottering in the conventional garden or whether it's out tending to the aquaponics setup. Though admittedly the aquaponics setup probably uses a lot that requires a lot less effort because A, I don't have to water the plants. I don't have to fertilize the plants. All I need to do is feed the fish a couple times a day and maybe top up the water every month or so. Except now in winter when it's raining quite heavily, it is actually to the top. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this segment, hit the thumb button. And of course, if you're new, please hit the bell notification and subscription buttons below. So till the next segment, bye.